So hey guys, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, introduction to Project Tapeoft. I'm Arthur Berezin, a Senior Technical Product Manager for Red Hat, and today I'm uh, going to present with me Hugh Brock, a Senior Development uh, Manager uh, responsible for Project Tapeoft. So unfortunately, I don't have a presenter, so I'm going to give a little cue to Hugh. I'm going to do the slides. So what are we going to cover today? So first of all, we're going to discuss on Project Tapeoft and what it is. Uh, basically, deployments tool, an, an intuitive and easy deployment tool for OpenStack. Uh, he is going to present the features, basically what makes uh, Step of what it is, and he's also going to present a little video demo of how the whole flow goes on deploying OpenStack from scratch to an actual production level uh, deployment. And we're going to discuss uh, some uh, few uh, future roadmap features that we're going to present uh, sometime in, in the near future. So, next slide, please. Hugh? Thank you. <laughs> yes, next one. So, OpenStack deployment. So, basically, can can go several ones. Yeah, there's all. Yeah. So, basically, back in the day, one, uh, when personally I had to install OpenStack, from packages, you know, back in the Diablo and Essex days, you just install the packages themselves, and then you had to go to the configuration files, and basically make everything like work together, right? We all know that OpenStack is basically about ten major projects. They interoperate uh, one with the other, with uh, the backend components, with database, message queuing, so on and so forth. So basically, we make everything try to make everything work together, and then they discover something is broken. Obviously, it never works, not from the first, not from the second, not from the third time. Then try to fix it, and then basically you give up, right? <laughs> That's what happened back in the day, and you just left OpenStack and try to move on with your life. So then we introduced PackStack, which is basically a quick deployment tool for OpenStack, right? Just a single command line tool lets you set up all the settings and the layout for OpenStack services. Then you run PackStack. Basically, you generate an answers file, and then you can configure that answer file as it has all the configuration in one centralized place. And then you just run PackStack with, the, with this answers file, uh, which basically makes, uh, runs puppets and makes all the configurations and deployment for OpenStack. Now, this is a really, really great quick tool to deploy OpenStack out of, from scratch. You understand very fairly easily how to make all those configurations, but the problem with that is that that PackStack is basically not robust enough. Uh, so if you had to go from one layout to another, if you had an old one layout uh, or basically a proof of concept deployment, and you wanted to expand that layout, that basically the deployment that would be very problematic and not uh, achieve achieved easily. So. We introduced uh, Project Foreman, uh, which is basically a great configuration management and provisioning tool. Basically, basically a very, uh, very uh, popular and accepted upstream project uh, that does provisioning uh, of bare metal hosts, uh, generates uh, kickstart files, and then provision hosts right from bare metal and later on runs puppet configurations on top of them using uh, form and uh, smart proxies. Okay, next slide, please. So as, as I mentioned before, Foreman uses a uh, puppet smart, uh, a notion called smart proxies. Puppet is one of them, so it's, it's able to run puppet configurations uh, and, and apply all those settings uh, that are set up in, in puppet uh, modules. Uh, and we uh, shipped integrated Puppet uh, modules and host groups within Foreman to make the OpenStack deployment fairly easy. So you will be able just to configure those host, those host groups and uh, assign the host groups to hosts, and basically you would run Puppet configurations on those hosts to deploy OpenStack. So. That's fairly nice, but still you have to know Puppet. You have to understand your way around Puppet. You have to make any considerable change to the default layouts. And you have to know OpenStack configurations and to know exactly which points you want to play with and change configurations to make a, a real production 
and working environment. So that's not easy. So hence we introduced project uh, Stapeft. So our mission statement is basically to provide and to provide an intuitive uh, tool to deploy OpenStack, actually production grade OpenStack deployments. So what, is that, what does it actually mean? So Project Stapeoff is basically a plugin that works on top of open, on top of Foreman and leverages Foreman's capabilities, right? Foreman is a very rich tool and Stapeoff basically leverages those capabilities uh, from uh, Foreman. And it's designed specifically to deploy OpenStack. So it includes very rich, uh, basically very intuitive user interface which goes right, uh, which gives you a nice uh, wizard that goes from step to step to step, basically taking all the needed information for you to describe your OpenStack deployment and basically run that configuration. It includes also the orchestration layer. Obviously, it's when you deploy OpenStack, it's very important to first deploy the database and then deploy the message queue, and only then configure Keystone and uh, all other control plane uh, services. So it also includes the orchestration layer. Uh, we also include in uh, the uh, auto discovery feature, a very nice uh, feature that lets you automatically discover new hosts in the environment. So you'll be able fairly easy, easily to, to deploy OpenStack uh, on top of them. And we also have included, and this is a very important one, okay, maybe it's last but not least, <laughs> oh, yeah, a very important one, a built-in high availability layout. So we'll know to, to deploy a highly available configuration for OpenStack is a very complex, complex task. And you have to build the whole environment, the whole uh, layout uh, from scratch, including all the architecture in the environment, including actually proxy, including the pacemaker and load balancer and so on. So we have this as a feature, part of the state of project. You just say you want a highly available environment and state of just basically deploys that for you. So Hugh is basically going to display, explain more and in, go into more detail in, in, into those features. OK. Everybody hear me OK? I'm going to have to walk back and forth a little bit uh, in the process of this, but that's all right. Uh, so my name's Hugh Brock. I am, uh, I'm an engineering manager at Red Hat, and uh, I'm more or less run everything that we do uh, around engineering the deployment, installation deployment management of OpenStack itself. Um, so yeah, as Arthur pointed out, uh, we have been, we have standardized on Foreman for uh, uh, Forel OSP4, our, um, our productized version of Havana. Um, and Foreman is, a, Foreman is a very capable provisioning tool, but it has some shortcomings uh, when deploying a system as complex as OpenStack. Um, in particular, uh, it did not, Foreman did not have a, any way to orchestrate um, complex deployments. So as Arthur mentioned, any way to stage the order that services come up in, make sure that block storage waits for controllers, make sure that computes wait for, wait for block storage, those kinds of things. Uh, and we also did not have in, um, in Foreman uh, the ability to simplify the UI for collecting all, the, all of the deployment parameters you need. As you guys know, if you've been around OpenStack at all, uh, there's a lot of information that has to be that has to be punched in in order to get even a mod modestly complex deployment to work. Uh, so we needed to solve those problems. We needed to solve them very quickly, uh, and that was the purpose of um, that was the purpose of Stay Puffed. So what I'm going to do is go through the features that we added in some detail, and then uh, show you my um, the results of my adventures in Linux video editing. <laughs> Um, which I am happy to report after going through several tools was actually successful, I think. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, so yes, the problem is difficult installation. Um, it, you could get an OpenStack deployment installed with Foreman, but it was not easy. Um, no workflow and incomplete HA modules. So Arthur, if you can hit my next slide, that'd be good. Uh, just hit the mouse button, it should work. 
Hang on, let me just have a look. There you go. Let's just put the cursor right there and then click. We're good. Okay. Right. So what we did, um, we built a we built an installer for the installer. First of all, um, the the hardest part of using Foreman actually, and I did, didn't even mention this, was getting it installed correctly, um, collecting the um, the network information that you're going to provision to. What's the DHCP range? What are the DNS names? You know, what order are the NICs going to come up in on the host? All of that kind of stuff was more or less left to chance before. Uh, so we have we did a lot of work pre-configuring the Foreman environment so that it's it's much easier to install now, and I'll show you that when we go through the video. Um, in addition, we had, we had a whole bunch of stuff that was kind of all coming to fruition at the same time with Foreman. Um, the, first, the first of that was the, um, the auto discovery image. Uh, so we now pixie onto bare metal um, a, for, a Foreman auto discovery image that's based on our RevH node. And it pokes around and discovers everything that you want to know about the host and then sends it back to the Foreman DB. So that you don't have to do, um, you don't have to sit there and enter, enter MAC addresses into a UI and other things like that. It should do that for you. Um, so auto discovery, um, nice clean UI for collecting deployment parameters with names for the parameters that are human readable um, and make some level of sense, which we didn't have before. Um, uh, I mentioned stage deployment. There is a at the same time we got the auto discovery. Uh, capability, the Foreman guys also came out with the first release of their orchestration plugin, which is called Dynflow. And Dynflow is a nice little Ruby tool that um, lets, lets you order Foreman tasks um, based on things that happen on hosts. So it's, in, it's still in relatively early days, um, so we weren't able to be all that sophisticated with it, but for this version, we were at least able to say, okay, deploy the controllers first, then deploy block storage, then deploy object storage, then deploy compute. Um, and, you know, don't, don't try to do everything all at once. Uh, and finally, in parallel with all of this, um, our, uh, our puppet team, some of whom are in this room, uh, have really broken their backs over the last six months getting uh, full HA puppet modules put together that we can, that we can really use and, and support. Um, so those are actually going to ship with our uh, RHEL OSP4 async 4 release, which comes out in a couple of weeks. Um, but they will let you deploy a, a, a fully highly available configuration of A4 um, in a relatively automatic way. Uh, and then that, that, that configuration has some active active and some active passive services. We'll be adding things like active active database for uh, uh, OSP5. So, the next slide there. There we go. Um, right, so I'll, go, I'll get into some detail of what the uh, features actually are. Um, we have it, we have just uh, actually over the weekend, I think. Uh, got a live CD of all of this working. And what that means is that you can boot a live image that uh, we'll have available online sometime in the next couple of days. Um, and it will collect some configuration information from you and then come up with uh, the Foreman UI running in the live CD environment. And you can go from that directly and provision your OpenStack, which I don't know that people will use that for production, but it's certainly handy for demos and POCs and that kind of thing. The live CD will also have the ability to install the Foreman software directly onto a host. By the way, any, if you have questions any time along this, just stop me uh, and ask. Hey, go ahead, Vinny. Does the auto discovery grab all the Mac in the system? Yeah, perfect? it does. It grabs them all. Um, and it tries to be smart about figuring out which one is management and which ones aren't. Um, there's limits to that, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this all, they, these are all in the OpenStack puppet modules upstream. Can you, can you please repeat your question? Sorry, yes, yes. Uh, apologies. The, um, 
Uh, question was, the HA, Puppet HA modules I'm talking about, are they the ones from, uh, from Puppet Forge? And the answer is yes, although we do have some patches against those modules that are upstream in the OpenStack Puppet modules projects. We're not, I, I believe there are a couple of instances where we're, um, we're a little bit different from the straight upstream. Yes, back here. Is there any plan to integrate this with an Anaconda Kickstart-based infrastructure already in place? Uh, yes, but not in this version. Um, one of the limitations we have with this right now is that it only works with the uh, with a discovered and with a discovered host that we then provision rel onto. Um, but yeah, we absolutely we recognize that that's not going to work for a lot of people. Um, so we are, we will be adding the ability to work with pre-provisioned hosts. Other questions before I go on? No, okay. Um, Right, uh, live CD. I th yeah, I think I covered that. Let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so auto discovery. Once we boot, boot the live CD, uh, we pixie a RevH image onto it. Um, it picks up all of the facts that it can and puts them back into the Foreman DB. So the end result of that, as you'll see in the video, is a list of hosts that you can um, that you can pick and choose from. Um, on, uh, on deployment, you, we then build those hosts for you based on um, the kickstarts that you choose. Um, we, ship, we obviously ship some. You have the option, as always, in Foreman of uploading your own. Um, and as I mentioned uh, in response to the question, we don't yet have support for pre-provisioned hosts. Foreman will work fine with pre-provisioned -pre hosts. Stay Puffed will not yet, but we are, uh, we're working on that. Um, so we added an install UI. Foreman, as you guys probably know, is a Rails app. Um, it runs uh, Rails 3.2, I think, 3.3. Um, and as such, it supports Rails engines. Uh, so what we did was just very quickly whip up a Rails engine that adds another tab to the existing Foreman UI. Um, that is dedicated to configuring OpenStack. Um, so when you're using Stay Puffed and you install Stay Puffed on top of Foreman, your, UI, your Foreman UI gets an extra tab that's dedicated to installing OpenStack. Uh, that, this part of the process was actually pretty easy because we were able to use a nice little um, wizard gem that we found. And uh, we did do some of the hard work, not all of it, um, in, in inferring the UI from the Puppet modules so that we don't have this sort of perpetual disconnection between what the UI is collecting and what the Puppet modules actually want, which has been a source of a lot of pain. Um, and we have more work coming up on that. Uh, I know the Foreman team has a whole, um, a whole set of work planned around creating a metadata layer, layer for parameters and that kind of thing. Yes, sir? Ah, yes, the question is, what are we doing with the facts when we're collecting them? So when I mentioned out of sync here, what I was referring to was you build a UI to collect all of the stuff that you need in order to deploy OpenStack. That quickly gets out of sync with the reality of OpenStack because the, the list of parameters and the ones you need change all the time. Um, and we get bit by that like weekly, it's horrible. Um, so uh, so we're, we're, we have added some logic that tries to look at the puppet modules and say, okay, what do you really need? And do we really need to collect all of this and how much can we default and that kind of thing? Um, we have more work coming on that later. Does that answer your question? Um, right. Uh -huh. Ah, the Foreman DB. Yes, this is, so the question was, what are we using as a fact repository? Um, we do not use Puppet DB, which is you know, the, question, the question everybody always asks, for various reasons, including closure. We can't ship it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> um, 
so we use the form, the, but however, Foreman has a perfectly serviceable database for collecting facts, and that's, that's what we use. Unfortunately, that means that we are, um, that gives us a problem with the upstream Puppet modules because many of them do use PuppetDB. So we may still at some point have to figure out how to ship PuppetDB. Um, but it's going to be difficult. Anyway, um, next slide. Uh, right, so Dynflow. Um, Dynflow is this, the orchestration module that the Foreman guys wrote over the last six months or so, I think. Uh, it's a nice little Ruby, Ruby um, plugin for Foreman that, um, that basically lets you write Ruby code to specify tasks and concurrent tasks and dependencies among tasks and wait conditions and that sort of thing. Um, it is a Foreman add-on and you'll see it uh, generally available in Satellite 6 when we release that this fall. Um, right now, we aren't using it to its full potential. We're just using it to stage the deployment of individual hosts. Um, but it, that's not a limitation of the tool. It was a limitation of the time we had to actually build out the, the OpenStack specific workflow in it. Um, once we get, yes, sir? Question? Question in a, in a dance flow, when you uh, do the provisioning task, do you have some kind of validator that the task uh, you know, flight was successful before you go to the next step? And does, does dance flow have this plug-in mechanism to you know, run the tasks and then potentially reboot the system and then write the wallet around the validator before going to the next thing? Yes. Uh, the question was, um, how do we does Dynflow have a mechanism for verifying when a task is completed and deciding what to do next? Um, yeah, the answer is Dynflow itself is, is, it's perfectly possible to make it do that. Um, it, but you, what we ran into was we did need to add logic to the Puppet modules um, to report success. Um, you know, like, yeah, I'm really done. Puppet all by itself will just finish, and you have to figure out if you need to run it again or run it a third time or a fourth or a 17th time or whatever it is in order to get the, uh, the box configured the way you want. Um, so we, we did have to do some work um, to, make the, to make Puppet smart enough um, to understand completion. Now, the right way to do that actually is to make the puppet modules themselves more granular and and hook the and put more work in the orchestration and less work in the puppet modules but that's a more um, that's going to be a longer term piece of work next slide oh sorry yes Um, the question was, can we deploy things other than Red Hat, uh, Red Hat OS? There's no reason you couldn't. We just haven't tested it. Um, so Foreman and Stay Puffed, as we ship them right now, run only on EL6. Uh, although Foreman Upstream, I'm pretty sure, runs is perfectly happy to run on Ubuntu as well. Um, Stay Puffed also is, is entirely upstream, but we've been in a product chase with it, and I don't know that the upstream version is working all that well right now. Um, however, uh, you know, the, the choice of operating system that you install on the host depends entirely on um, the initial Pixie image. On. Yeah, and we have been developing on CentOS as well, so it's you know it's 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 not it's not just RHEL. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, the HA work was a um, uh, was a parallel effort for this release. Um, we've defined four layouts for architectures: two non-HA and two HA, and um, uh, since we're you know, continuing, continuing to support Nova Network in addition to Neutron, those, were, those are the other two parts, pieces of the matrix. Um, our, Arthur has a slide that will show a little bit of our HA architecture later, but it's, uh, it's, it's the simplest thing we could put together that would be bulletproof. 
Um, yeah, go ahead. Ah, storage in this, the question was what are we doing for storage? Storage in this configuration, uh, for example, DB is on shared storage that you. Uh, what are we doing for storage? Not even, we're not even, we're just doing LVM for block storage right now, right? I mean, we don't even have cluster yet. Yeah, we don't have, we're not deploying either Ceph or Gluster right now. Um, that would, that's going to have to, we're going to have to add that later. Yeah, but, I, yeah, yeah, no, no, you, the Gluster options are there. They're just, you just can't use, you have to use like an LVM backend or something. Uh, I can't remember. Ask one of these guys later. They can tell you. <clears throat> um, Right, anyway, uh, three controller nodes um, all running identical stacks. Um, databases active passive. Um, Cupid in this iteration is active passive, although we have support for Rabbit coming for OSP5, right? Um, and that will be active active, I think. Um, In, so that, and that, that's basically the architecture. You'll see the diagram later. Um, four, five, again, we'll be getting more um, variation in the different architectures that you can have. Like, you know, you might, do you want to break, you want to break out neutron network or do you want to break out storage controllers, other things like that. We don't have that right now. Uh, okay, next slide. Oh, yes, sorry, question. Uh, Uh, yes, we, we have we've run through the full um, the full install on bare metal using KVM um, and also on in the, the easiest way to test it is actually in a rev setup where you've got five or six VMs and you can just test the test the deployment. But we've tested that and uh, bare metal as well. Another question? Uh, yes, it is. It is on the RDO wiki, isn't it? Oh, the, sorry. The question was: uh, uh, Is the HA configuration documented anywhere? Um, and the answer is yes. I believe it is on the RDO wiki, um, and it'll certainly be in the release notes when we drop a four. Sir. Um, the question was, is there an upgrade path if you want to move to Stay Puft and you're already on OSP4? Here's the thing. Um, Stay Puft is an installer, so it's not really going to help you upgrade. Um, you can, there is definitely an upgrade path um, for using Foreman, using the new version of Foreman. Um, with your existing A4, with your existing OSP4 deployment. Um, we didn't get at all into trying to support upgrades with Stay Puft yet. That's going to be another thing down the road. Currently, OSP4 has no HA So question was, when you're moving from OSP4 to OSP5, can you take your existing non-HA OSP4 environment and move it to an HA configuration? And my friend Vinny here is telling me that, yes, we have done it before. Um, so I don't know how much professional services is required to do that, but I'll, a lot is the answer. But yeah, in theory, there's no reason you couldn't do it. You know. Um, other questions before, we, before I try to put my money where my mouth is? Yes, sir. Uh, no, and in, in its current, in the question was after the initial install, is there a still a role for Stay Puffed? Uh, and in its current form, no. Once you've done, you've designed your deployment and you're happy with it and you spit it out there, you don't basically would never go back there again. Now, with, on the other hand, uh, Foreman is still there, 
still hangs around, and that's going to be the path for modifying existing configuration. Yeah, so basically that's a deployment tool, but you still can use format, you know, to, to expand your environment, to add new compute hosts, and so on. So you can't use it to add compute hosts? No. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, so that's part of uh, formats uh, functionality. Yeah. Now, we would I would like to, be, to add the ability to go back and modify an existing deployment, add capacity, that kind of thing, but we don't have it in there right now. I have a question back here. Sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Could you speak up a little bit more? Uh, yes. So, so, so basically, Foreman is a, is a Let me repeat the question first. So uh, the question was, we already have fuel. Um, for Puppet, and Crowbar is already out there for Chef. Why did we do another installer? That so sounds yes, like a product so management question to me, so I'm so going to let the product <laughs> <manager> <laughs> so, 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 so basically, Foreman is, is a deployment tool, but it's not only a deployment tool, it's also the, the management component for the OpenStack environment. So basically, when you manage the life cycle of your OpenStack environment, you know, can use Foreman to manage that. So step of basically, it's not only deployment tools, the component that allows Foreman to install, for, to install OpenStack, but you still manage your environment and your life cycle of those hosts through Foreman. So it's not just a deployment tool, it does a lot, a lot more. You get, can you, can you, yeah. So yeah, so Triple O is, is basically uh, the upstream effort for doing an OpenStack deployment, right? But that's... Yeah, and to be clear, I manage our Triple O efforts as well, <laughs> which puts me in kind of an interesting position. Uh, hang on, I'll speak to that a little bit. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's a couple of, other, couple of other points on that question that I, I think are, are interesting. Um, one of the things we're really interested in at Red Hat uh, is we want to tie um, we want to tie content management and content versioning and the other stuff that we do with our satellite product into OpenStack provisioning. Um, as, as some of you guys probably know, uh, Foreman is is the provisioning tool for satellite, and it is going to it is going to get rolled into satellite in the next version. And we wanted a way for wanted a way to be able to provision OpenStack with satellite. Now, having said that, um, I I believe that we will wind up, and everybody will wind up standardizing on Triple O as the long term configuration and management application for OpenStack. And one of my challenges is going to be figuring out how to sort of swap out the deployment and management mechanism so that we're using the upstream standard um, over time. But that's a, that's a problem I'm going to have to solve. So um, I had the same question as the other guy. Yeah. Why wouldn't we have picked up, picked up more pieces of fuel and integrated it with our stuff, is what you're asking. Uh, well, and it, it, comes back to, um, it comes back to product strategy with satellite. I mean, we wouldn't be able to integrate fuel with satellite. Um, it's, it's, yeah. But it sounds like a lot of the pieces you, you made were adjacent to your strategy. They were just pieces you needed. And the pieces mm -hmm. already existed in the community. Well, the, the HA modules? in particular are the same ones that everybody else is using. We've just done a lot of work on them. Uh, so, I mean, my, my understanding of the HA modules that, uh, that Fuel currently uses is that um, they're not, 
they were not in a shape where we felt like we could support them in a product. Um, and so we've, we've, we've done a lot of work and it's all, you know, it's all up there um, in, the, in the community to make that better. Um, the remaining pieces, dis the, the discovery piece was already there. The workflow engine was already there. So what we did was basically take a bunch of stuff that we already had and kind of jam it together. Yeah, let's watch the demo. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a five minute demo. Uh, right, so let's see if YouTube will do what I want it to do. Okay, so I may have to start and stop this a little bit. Let me, oh, hang on, this is really tiny. That's not gonna work at all. Uh, let's see. No, that's even worse. Mm, ah, hold on. There we go. Ah, uh, hold on. The very, there we go, that's what we wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna start, start and stop this a little bit because it goes really, we had to speed it up so we could get it into five minutes, but. All right, so what we're starting off with here, we are, we're just installing for, Stay Puffed and Foreman onto a, a vanilla rail six machine, okay? So the, what you're about to see here is just um, Mike Burns here in the middle going through uh, the installer stages. So we're defining a bunch of stuff here. It goes running the Stay Puffed installer itself, and we define a bunch of network stuff in advance, things like, you know, what's your DHCP range, what's your DNS, uh, your DNS route. Oh, maybe I can, how do I do that? Push this thing. Ah. Okay, that's all it's gonna give me, huh? All right, too bad. Can, is there a, do you, can you focus a YouTube? I have no idea. Oh, the projector's out of focus. Yes. Hang on. Yeah, it's not much better. Yeah. All right. Got to use a bigger font next time, I guess. But uh, anyway, so, all right, so that's, that's what's happening here. And now we're actually running through the install of Stay Puft and Foreman themselves, having pre-configured network and a few other things like that. We did pre-install some stuff to speed this up. Uh, you can see it supports subscription manager, so if you're doing it on RHEL, then it'll pull content from your satellite setup and, or from our CDN. Does that process have any kind of answer file? Uh, yes. It, well, we're working on it. Uh, These questions you can't answer in your files, but uh, standard form answer files should work on the DHCP initially. Well, it basically works on the IDO. Right. Right. So he's choosing. Um, what are we doing? Oh, we're choosing what uh, where the where the what repo we're going to install from. And this is all in the Foreman UI now. Does the live CD have a local mirror? Has yes, it so does. Do it yeah. It, oh wait, didn't we? I thought we ran out of space because we we're using a local mirror. Right. All right, so now we get to the auto discovery. I'm not gonna make you wait all the way through the auto discovery. It takes a, it takes a little while. Um, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and you can, we, we cut to the end of auto discovery, but you can see now you've got, what, one, two, three, four, six, six hosts here, and we figured out the MAC addresses and a bunch of other stuff. All right. Now we go on to filling in the wizard. So this is the actual 
UI deployment. Um, and I'll just pause right here. So this is a this is a screen on which you cannot make any choices. The choices are coming in a release a release down the road very soon. Um, but right right now, as I mentioned, we only support the four layouts that I that I uh, that I described. Um, so you do that, and then you go to the next screen, and this is where you configure all the different services. The services change according to the layout that you choose. So here we have a bunch of HA services that we're configuring. Can you pre-populate this with seeds file? Like you could yes. Okay. Yep. So, and, I mean, for the non-HA stuff, you can almost take the defaults, right, Mike? Most of them, yes. When you get an HA, then, like, filling in on the, 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 I, the VIPs and stuff like that is, takes more work. That's a thing we need to automate, but we haven't done it yet. So we fill in a bunch of parameters. And the nice thing about this is that it's, um, you know, the parameters are grouped. It's a lot easier to understand what's going on here than it is in the, in the previous form and setup. So I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I will skip to the deployment stage in a bit. Solometer, I think we're almost done with this part. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you're done filling in the wizard. And now we go choose, choose which hosts we're going to uh, use for which roles. There we go. So you'll pick three controllers. One block storage one object, and three computes. And we, in this, for this go around, we happen to be doing this with VMs, but we did also do it, uh, we were doing it with live, live machines for a while. It just takes forever. Uh, it would not have. And in theory, it would work. It just wouldn't really be highly available. The question was, would it have stopped you if you tried to do two? And we talked about, like, how much validation do we want to do? Really, we should probably say, warning, this is not going to be a highly available configuration. Um, but right now, we're not. That's what I was asking Dan. Could you choose HA layout, then only choose one controller, and then at that point, what's the difference between non-HA and HA? Yeah, some different puppet modules. Um, so we get through that, and... Now here we are actually deploying everything. Um, anyway, you can see it going by. This is pretty much it. I was unable to get the section of the video that shows the Horizon UI to encode without crashing my laptop. So I apologize for that. Um, but I got the rest of it. The, topo the topology is not yet configurable. The question was, is, is the topo topology configurable? We would like it to be, um, but we have to, uh, we need to get, get to a point where, I'll let you finish up, Arthur. We need to get to a point where we can, where we can support the configurations that you choose, and that makes it tricky. So yeah, but, but that, that is part of the roadmap, and that will be possible in the near yeah. future. So, so we're run of time. And we're out of time, so I will leave you with, the last if one. I can get this to work, the last slide. Yes. Close this tab. Uh, right. Yeah. There we go. Named, by the way, in honor of the late Harold Ramis. Thank you all very much. Uh, any questions, I'll be hanging around.